Hey everybody, welcome to Shaper Sessions. This week is going to be super fun. Jake and I are going to walk you through all the things you need to know about sign making, all the tips and tricks we've learned in the past couple of years. So let's go ahead and jump into sign making. We're going to run through a bunch of slides quickly as we normally do in sessions, and then we're going to get to cutting and show you a couple of cool little projects towards the end. So first slide is just kind of a general overview of where origin and signage really fits well together. You know, small batch signs, really custom signs, this is like a really sweet spot for origin. There's obviously a lot of great options if you're trying to make hundreds and thousands of signs, but origin's really well suited for these small rounds. And you know, you can always make, you know, batches, but there, you know, it comes with a cost. So so really single one-off signs are really awesome for origin. Two is it's really important to understand kind of what type of signs you can build with origin. You know, profile cuts and engraving cuts are really the two that we really operate in. If you're looking for contour, carving, uh, shapely surfacing, that's not something Origin does. So just remember when we're going through these, we're, we're really going to talk about these profile cuts and engraving cuts. It's also really awesome for large signs and small signs. You know, Origin works at a variety of sizes from big to small. You can work on huge letters, eight feet eight feet wide and you're going to work on tiny little micro signs for a, a shop or a store. So we'll go through some of those later on in the session. And then, you know, if you already have a CNC, prototyping is a really cool way to use Origin. There's a lot of flexibility on the tool when you're building stuff, playing with things. It's very interactive in some sense. So that's another really cool way to use Origin with signage. The last thing that we should really talk about is kind of the on-site ability with Origin. And this is kind of two things. One is a flexibility of being able to modify something on site if you want to add something. For instance, we have these videos online where one of the guys, he actually took a sign up on a snowmobile into a lodge and modified it while he was there. So you can watch that on YouTube. It's a really fun video. And then the last really thing to think about is the insurance policy. So if you cut your signs out at your shop and then you go to deliver them, and you need to change something, there's this precision that you get from Origin, which allows you to do it right there on the spot rather than having to go back to your shop and continue doing it there. So th this is kind of going to be the, the main things that we're going to talk about today. And uh, if you have questions, obviously the chat's there for you. So next up we have software. So this is going to be a big one for a lot of people. You know, they know what Origin is, they know how, how wood works and cutting, but there are you know, a lot of confusion about the software. So when we talk about signs, we're really going to focus mainly on 2D vector packages. There's a lot of different types out there, and you really need to just pick one or two that you can get comfortable with. 3D packages such as Fusion, they can be useful in sign making, but I would say for the majority of things I've seen people do, I'd really focus on these 2D packages. Vector.com is kind of a shapes-only web design software. We have videos on this online. We walk you through the entire process of how to use Vector, how to get files in and out, use them for origin. So, you know, you can always go look up that as well on our channel. There's another one, Vecteasy. We have some tutorials online for that. It's really good for text, really simple stuff that you would do on the web. Affinity Designer is where we kind of go from like this easy web softwares to a little bit more powerful software. It's a, about a $50 program, buy it once and you have it forever. It does a lot of the basics for sign making, shapes, text, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people have used this and really enjoy it. Next is Inkscape. It's actually a free software. I don't personally like this software. It's cumbersome and I, I don't think it is as simple as it should be, but a lot of people have been able to use it and make really cool stuff out of it. So that's an option. And then the last is Illustrator from Adobe. It's a great package for more of the professional side of things where you really want all the powerful features. So we'll go over some of these later and I'll show you a couple demos in it, but just know we're really focusing on 2D stuff. In one other option there, if, if you're not you know, super comfortable with software, you can always use Shaper Assist. We have a full service online, which allows you to send in ideas. We give you a quote. If you like it, we'll continue to build that project, ship it directly to your tool over Wi-Fi, and you can just instantly get to cutting and building the signs. So th those are kind of some of the options for software. And really, the big reason I say this is text and image alignment is just really a lot easier in 2D versus 3D. Most of the 3D packages, it's, it's a lot harder to align these things easily and change them quickly. So that's why we're going to stick with mostly 2D stuff for today. So, okay, so let, let's quickly talk about the pre-made design side of software, which is, you know, using other softwares to grab the images and 
create them into shapes that we can use with Origin. So there's really three that we're going to go over. One, obviously, is Shaper Hub. All these files are built to work with Origin and they're available online. You can go search signs. We have a signed category and you can kind of scroll through those and see if any of them fit what you need. Then you don't have to do any design. The second is a noun project. This is actually a quite a cool website where you can just go online, type in a noun, and it will give you hundreds of icons and you can pick one. I will say sometimes these icons need a little cleaning up later, but for a lot of a lot of the cases, they just work quite well. So that's an option. And then the third is you can actually search Google for images and set the type of image you're looking for to a line drawing, and that will return SVG files. SVG files are the type of files we cut on Tool, so those can go kind of straight in the Tool as well. You know, depending on the complexity, there, there could be some after work that you need to do, but these are kind of some of the th three ways where you don't have to design it from scratch. You can start with something and and move forward. So the, that's I just wanted to kind of go over that for everyone. Now, obviously, a big thing with signs is fonts. There's a couple font tips that I want to go over real quick so that everyone's aware. But we're going to start with the first one, which is kind of the top area image. So when we talk about fonts, normally the 2D vector files, they kind of hold their own file type as a font, which isn't really points of, of the font, it's actually like their own custom thing. So Origin normally doesn't import those. You actually need to tell the software, hey, I want to outline this font. And creating an outline actually turns that font file thing into discrete points. So when you're actually importing that, it has to be converted to this outline first. So like, for instance, in Adobe Illustrator, you can right click the font object and click Create Outlines, and it will turn into little points. So you can kind of see where we have the hello up top. It's not individual points. It's Adobe's own understanding of font. And then when we create outlines, the image to the right turns into little discrete points. So that, that's one key thing. Any program you're using, you'll probably have to create the outlines from the text. OK, so next up, we're going to talk about thick and thin fonts, because this is something that actually gets me quite a bit, and I, I always forget. So. When you pick a kind of a script font that's maybe a little more cursive, curly, et cetera, it's actually going to have like parts that are very thick and parts that are very thin because that's a nice, it has a nice look to it. But what can be a problem is, let's say we're trying to do an epoxy pour in there. If it gets too thin, we won't be able to fit our bit through there. So one of the things we have to do is while we're working on them, actually kind of take a quick minute to look and make sure that all the small areas would actually fit. I'll show you this later, but normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a, a little dot that represents my bit size. So if I know I'm going to cut this at an eighth of an inch, I'll go in there and I will just kind of move the dot, a circle that's an eighth of an inch around the, the design and check if it's it's roughly enough. That's a quick way to, to tell that it's going to fit or not before you get on the tool later. Next up is tight corners. So this is one that gets everybody when they first start using it. Origin is a router bit. That means when you're cutting, you're making you're always going to have an edge that's round. So let's say we're looking at these two high images in the bottom. The one on the left is actually, it's got squares on the outside. And if we're cutting the inside of that shape, when we go to round the corner, it's not going to clear out that perfect angular corner. It's only going to get kind of a, a, a circle around it. So there's always going to be a little part that's not removed. Now there's really two options here. One is we can chisel them out uh, after we're done and, and we have a perfect representation. Origin will automatically kind of restrict the bit to wherever it can cut. So it, it, Origin will cut around, and then you would come back with a chisel, and you would just kind of pair those corners up. That's a really common way to do it. And if you like the kind of the squared look, that's a you know totally a great way to do it. If you want to make it a little easier on yourself, you can round those corners. So you would go into your software, and you would click and kind of get all the active points. And then most of the softwares have a way to say, I want to round all the corners to a certain amount. So in Illustrator, you can click on that, select all the points, and say round these corners to 0.25 inch. And that would mean they would kind of take all the hard corners and soften them. So if you look to the right, you'll see it's softened all the edges of the eye. And now I can cut there. Everything will be removed. I think we talked about it in a session before where this is kind of how you do inlays, right? You're, you're, you want to make sure those inside and outsides will fit. So this is a pretty cool thing. And if your so software supports it, it'll save you a lot of time. And then the last thing with fonts that we should talk about quickly is Text Basic. So Origin has extensions on it. One of them is called Text Basic. And this allows you to do really simple text quickly. It's a single spaced line 
which basically means you're you're traversing the text on the center of the the lines so instead of where you see the sed in this image where you're kind of doing a double line around the outside this would be a single line that goes through the d and we'll we'll go over that later on in the session so that's that's kind of some tips on fonts and now we'll move on all right you can't talk about signs without talking about materials so if you missed last week's session, we talked about materials and cutters. Sam went through all the types of stuff you can cut with Origin. A lot of these are really applicable to sign. We didn't go over all of them, so we will talk about some of them today. But really, the big ones to hit are, you know, obviously wood. Plywood's a great sign material. It has a lot of properties to keep them really structurally sound. Hardwoods, you can create beautiful kind of one-off signs. We kind of have some behind us that you saw in the intro. One thing I will note with the hardwoods and the softwoods is you got to be careful with the tear out. So let's say you're you know cutting a sign that has a bunch of intricate details. You know when you're coming around a cor corner and curve, if the grain kind of doesn't intersect correctly, you may end up cutting off those. We can go over that in a little bit, but that's just a, a little tip to keep up for later on. MDF is a great one for indoor signs. Super easy to machine. You can sand and surface it really nicely. For instance, later we're going to talk about some types of bits you can use. The MDF is really great for those types of bits where you want kind of a, a curvy letter on the surface and give it kind of a 3D effect, which is really uh, nice. Dye Bond is a aluminum plastic composite. So it has two sheets of aluminum, really thin on the top and the bottom, and then a plastic in between. And this is a really common sign material because it's, it doesn't get messed up very quickly and it's very easy to machine. We actually have one up on the sign here and we'll kind of explain a little bit more about that because it's a really cool sign, but let me pull it off real quick just so you can see. You can kind of see the edges if we go over to here where it's a plastic with two aluminum pieces on the front and the back. So this is a sign material that's really common. Uh, we'll get and talk a little bit of the details of this later on. Foam PVC. So this is a really common sign material now. It's actually essentially like a kind of a super thick poster board that can be printed on. And there's a lot of people that are printing on these things. And Origin is really cool because you can get somebody to print on these foam PVCs and you can get Origin to cut out the shapes afterwards. I will note PVC can be quite nasty. So make sure you wear a respirator when you're cutting this stuff so you don't put all that stuff in the air. The next up is acrylic. This is another great one, especially for kind of indoor signs and stuff. You can have some really cool designs. We have one that we'll go over in a minute that's quite cool. And then the last one is HDPE. This is actually a thing that we showed last week. I want to quickly cut over to this camera. No, it made me so they can see. So this is a two layer, or three layered plastic, uh, black on the back white in the middle and black on the front and if you cut through it to a certain depth you end up sh revealing the color underneath so that's a really cool sign material uh, you'll notice that a lot of times they'll have this like in a park uh, where you know it's really good for the uh, it's really good for you know outside signs where you don't have to finish them any anymore you can find it it's called starboard color core uh, there's a bunch of different types out there that you can play with uh, and find online. Next up we have, we're going to talk a little bit about cutters. I don't want to go too much into detail here because we did it last week. But you can go check that out. All of those sessions are recorded and online, so make sure you go watch this. But quickly, I want to talk about a few key ones because it's pretty important to know. So for one, this bit doesn't come with Origin, but if you're cutting hard plastics, soft metals, it's a really you basically need to have it. It has a totally different type of chip ejection than the ones that come with Origin. And for plastics, you're typically cutting at kind of a slower spindle speed and maybe even a faster traversal speed on the surface because you are essentially heating up the plastic and, and certain plastics have a tendency to melt when they get hot. So this O-flute is actually going to help that a lot. And, and I would recommend if you're going to cut plastics and kind of these dye bond, aluminum, this kind of stuff, you should really get this O-flute cutter. So that's one that, yeah, if you're doing signs, you got to have one. So next. So this is the fourth inch roundover. I think we talked about it last week, but the key here is that there's no bearing bit on the top of this. This is a, a fourth inch roundover bit without a bearing bit. So you don't want to run bits that have bearing bits in origin. Origin's correction range will actually take care of that uh, for you. But what's really cool about these roundover bits is you can actually round over parts of the design that you can't get on a router table after the fact. So let's say we have an inside cut on a rectangle. You can't really do that on a router table afterwards. 
and you can take this bit, put it in the origin, and then follow the same path you already cut while lowering it down, and you'll actually get a super nice curvature on the top of that. So that's something, this is a really cool one if you're kind of looking for this edge treatment. I, I really like this bit. They're really easy to find. Amazon has them. There's so many places you can buy these, but it's a really cool edge treatment. Next, conical ball nose. You know, we talked a little bit about for mold making, draft angle. I also like this one just to get kind of a, a kind of a small angle that's going deeper on a, like a letter cut. Like if I'm cutting letters out, I get a little bit of a, a curved or a, a, an angle on it. And this, this is kind of a bit that I find really helps make those look nice. Yeah, especially, you know, if you're, if you're working on little tiny letters, it can help keep that down while you're cutting versus, you know, if you're cutting straight down, it may pop off the double-sided tape or whatever you're using to do it. So this one's pretty cool, more of a fun bit to use for signs. This is one that I really love, the ball nose bits. So this is actually a small version of it. It's a fourth inch. What you'll notice is sometimes they actually, uh, actually here, let's go here, Noah, real quick. A lot of them will be uh, more like this. So you're getting a lot bigger of a curve when you're cutting. One thing to note is, you know, you don't want to go full depth and cut this in one pass. So you would sneak down and kind of feel out how much resistance is going through your material making sure the plastic or whatever you're cutting is not burning. Uh, MDF is really good with this, I would suggest, uh, especially if you're, you know, if you're doing these like uh, Miette signs that Sam did last week where you're cutting through and you really want to reveal the underside of that HDPE. These are a really nice look to the signs. So that, that's the ball nose bit. These are really nice for sign making. All right, so when we talk about signs, got to talk about finishing. So there's really three key things that we're going to talk about here. One is the Oro cut masking. This one is kind of a, it saves you some steps as you're painting and kind of finishing stuff, but it, it will require you to cut a little bit more. You're going to have to have a drag knife. We have a link up here, Widget Works Unlimited, which is a, a really nice version of the drag knife that you can stick straight into Origins fourth inch collet. This is Oro cuts really for if you're cutting something and then you want to paint that sign without kind of removing the paint from everything else afterwards, this is kind of the way you do it. It's pretty easy to apply. A lot of videos out there online, you can go check that out uh, if you're interested. The next is, I don't know what the name of this method is, I call it the paint and sand method. We have a video that we did a long time ago with a shaper sign, a long, maybe two or three years ago now, where you know it, it's super easy method where you basically cut your shapes out you go back with a can of spray paint and you fill all the holes that you've just cut, let it dry, and then you hit it with sandpaper afterwards. And what you end up having is like this really hard contrasting sign, super easy, takes no time at all. If you're kind of doing something quickly, this one is my favorite. I use it all the time. And then last but not least, definitely not least, epoxy. Everyone is kind of getting in on this and it's actually got a lot of really nice uses for signs instead of having to do inlays you can just pour it so so I'll, I'll, I'll quickly show this one here because I think this is one Jake did a while ago so essentially all you have to do is cut out the holes with shaper and then mix the epoxy up pour it in uh, and drum sand the top of it there's a couple different ways to do this uh, but uh, overall it's quite easy and painless uh, and there's only a couple real things you have to think about. One is if you're going to have any bleed out when you're pouring the epoxy. So depending on the type of wood you're on, if it's very porous, when you pour colored epoxy straight into it, as it dries, it may leak into the outside and kind of keep your letters not as crispy as you would like. One fix for that is to pour clear epoxy first, let it dry, and then pour your colored one afterwards. Uh, that'll keep the second color from leaking in. I've done that and it works quite well. Uh, the other option is actually this filming in progress sign if we go over here. So this, this one is actually a super cool one because you actually, instead of cutting straight on this side, you actually flip it the other way and you cut through the back and you mirror the design. So instead of cutting filming in progress, you're cutting the opposite on the back and you cut almost, to, almost all the way through. And then when you fill that with epoxy, it kind of holds it holds it in there and then you bring it back to the drum sander flip it the other way and just kind of keep taking the top off until it reveals the epoxy and that'll keep you from having to worry about it spilling everywhere it's a really nice method to to doing that so there's a couple ways to do it 
yeah, and obviously this one's backlighted, uh, which is super cool. Uh, the ones that you pour in, you can't really backlight those. Um, but this is a really, I, I think this is a really beautiful sign. So there's some really cool ways. Obviously, there's so many videos on how to use epoxy, and there's a lot of people on the forum who are using it and talking about best ways they've, they've seen it done, which ones work best, et cetera. So these are kind of the three main ways, I think, that people are using it. But, you know, once you join up and see the community, you'll see all sorts of stuff going on. So that's finishing for signs. And then this one's kind of a new one, but I wanted to quickly talk about this one because I think it's quite cool. You know, we just showed the the backlit sign for the screen, but you know, there's other, there's a lot of new stuff going on in kind of lighting and, and really cheap lighting that you can find. And when you kind of put that in with signs, they really become a lot more powerful, especially at night. So LED strips are now widely available. You can buy them online. You know, we did that for the film sign. You, I think that's actually a whole backlit panel that we just put underneath it. So it's got this really uniform look to it. But, you know, the lights are getting very cheap and adding those to the sides, backlighting them, shooting light out the sides. There's a lot you can do there. And then the next one is, this is kind of what I was talking about with the acrylic. This is actually a really cool one. So we, on the community forum, sometimes we have these things called weekend projects where someone posts a, a design file and then multiple people try to build that, improve on it talk about what went well, what didn't go well. This was the second one we ever did, and this was a LED sign. So if you take acrylic and you shine LEDs up through the bottom where you've cut, anything that's engraved will really stand out. Everything else will be kind of clear and you'll be able to see through it. So you can imagine building a big sign that had a big, large engraving on it. And when you shoot an LED through the edge, you can actually just, the sign just kind of pops and appears. And it's kind of a cool effect. And so there's some really cool things you can do with lighting. I would say, you know, if you're into signs, this is something you should be kind of checking out. Okay, now, one thing I really want to talk about is, you know, signs and origin software. So for those of you who don't have origin, origin has updates to get pushed to the tool for free. And the last one that got pushed was called Humboldt. This actually included a huge overhaul of the grid. The grid used to be a little more restrictive where you could only create the grid on the bottom left of an object. Now it's virtually, you can grid anywhere. So you can, there's really three types. There's edge grids, which you're using the edge of a material to align a grid. The software kind of walks you through all this and you can modify it as you would like. You can do the bottom left or the top right or any side. A surface grid is a second type of grid, which allows you to do kind of make a, let's say you make a mark on the top of the surface, a 90 degree mark, you can then use an engraving bit and looking through the bottom of the tool, you can kind of quickly create a grid on the surface of your material. And then the last one is kind of a mix of that where you're using two points from the edge of a material and then a mark on the top and you're getting this, what we call a hybrid grid. And this allows you to kind of align files with a mark on the surface. So Grids can get really powerful, especially when we start talking about signs, because now you're going to have multiple elements arranged. You know, you can do some of that on the computer up front, but let's say you forget or you want to add something or change it. Now with the Humboldt software, you can actually manipulate all that. So that's one thing that's really cool. The last thing that I want to talk about with the software is the alignment. So with the grids, there's now a really easy ability to do what we call a flip cut, which is where you're taking a file and you're kind of wanting to put a file on the same piece on both sides, right? Because you can only cut down on the top. So if you want to cut the other side, you have to flip it and cut that. And now with the new grid system, you can probe off the bottom left, cut one side, flip your piece and probe off the bottom right. And you're still aligning to the same datums that you previously did. And that will allow you to have this perfectly aligned front and back piece. It's a pretty cool little thing. Workstation makes it super easy. If you haven't check that out, definitely take a look. And then the last thing I want to talk about was the mirror cuts. We, we talked a little bit about that earlier with the filming sign, but being able to reverse your cuts and cut into them, especially if you're doing molds or if you're doing uh, stuff like this where you're cutting the backside of something, that's something that can be achieved in the software where you can go into the software and while you're placing the file down, you can just reverse the X and Y and now you have a reversed image that you can cut straight on tool and it will be the opposite. So these are just some of the software kind of improvements that have come that are really valuable to sign making in general. Obviously we keep updating the tool, it gets better and better. So who knows what will be next. All right, so now we're gonna roll over to my computer, and I'm gonna show you a couple demos. So the first one we're gonna go over is 
a vector. So this is that really, let me I'll make this a little bigger for you. So this is the online software, easy editor. It's kind of, if you're not used to software, this is the one I would suggest starting with. It's free, it's in a browser. You really can't uh, mess it up. So, all right, so we're in the program now and all we're gonna do is we're gonna design a little thing that maybe we couldn't design on tool. Maybe we want a little name tag for a sign that we're building. So I'm just gonna show you how simple it is. So we just click rectangle and we drag it out. So we have our rectangle here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what color it is. I like to, it, it just randomly picks a color every time you make a shape. So then I'm gonna pick an ellipse and, and draw that. So if we hold down shift, it'll automatically scale it to a circle. And I'm just gonna make a small circle. Okay, so here we go. And now in order to get this little kind of cutout, it's kind of a classic sign shape. I'm just gonna drag this shape over and you'll see there's a little, when I get to the corners, there's a little bit of a blue that shows up. And that means it's centered on that corner. So now I have my first one. If I duplicate that shape uh, with Command D or copy paste, it'll show another one. I can do the same thing down here. You'll see it has some smart guides. They're kind of quite useful for doing alignment. Uh, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm just com Command Ding across uh, until I get all four of the corners with this. So now here's where vector gets really powerful. So if I select the, the box first, and then I shift select the other ones. Oh, I think it's command select. Yeah, command select. Okay, maybe I can just select them all. Yeah, so if I select them all, now all these shapes are selected and you'll notice there's kind of some options up top. And if I scroll my mouse over, you'll see they actually are doing separate different types of operations. And we really want the subtract operation. So if you click that, now the shape is a small tag. So let's say we wanted to sign with kind of cutouts. We now have a small element that we can import into origin, create text on, put a logo inside of it. Uh, Vector also has uh, some simple shapes, but it, it's pretty limited there. Uh, you know, if we wanted an arrow, we can we can drag an arrow into here, and now we have an arrow inside of our shape. Now, how do we get that onto the tool? We can just uh, click up here where export is, and now we're just gonna download this shape. It, it comes in as an SVG, so it'll go straight into tool. Once we download it, we pop over to Shaper Hub, we go to My Origin Files, Upload Files, and we select that untitled SVG file. It'll get uploaded, and now that file is available on Tool. So that, that's a real quick demo of Vector. We have a whole, I think Sam did a whole hour-long video on how to actually use that, um, that software with the workstation. Some really cool stuff like how do you convert an image to something cuttable on, a, on Origin in Vector. So if you're interested in that, you can go check that out. All right, so next up, I wanna do a quick demo where we go to the Noun Project and we're just gonna type something in and Noun Project's really great because it basically gives you free icons uh, and if for kind of personal use and if you wanna use it for more commercial use, then you would have to pay a small fee. It's a couple dollars. So I would say it's, it's well worth it, especially when you start designing software for Origin and you realize how much time it can take. So let's, let's say we wanna make a sign for, I don't know, let's say fishing. So I'm gonna type in fishing and hit search and now we have a bunch of logos of fishing show up so what's cool here is you know there's so many options you can actually see you know oh i, I like this design better oh i i don't want to actually have a hook in there so you can really pick exactly what you want one of the things that i think is important here is just to pick one that uh looks like it will work on origin and how does that how do i do that so if, if something gets really busy, like let's say maybe this one here uh, or this one here, these files may, they may work, they may not, uh, it, it just kind of depends. Uh, but simpler looking ones, like for instance, these, this one or this one, this one's kind of cool, so let's just pick this one. So you can see a preview, it's very simple. We can just download this instantly. Uh, we can say get icon, you can see I have a couple of prepaids left, but 
Pro downloads allow you to do uh, for $2, you can use it for whatever you want. And basic downloads don't cost anything, but you need to attribute the designer somehow. Uh, I'm going to do pro download and download this. So we can download PNG or SVG. We'll go ahead and do the SVG. And so that downloads. It's on my computer. I can now use this for however I like. OK, so let's open up Illustrator. And this is going to be a real simple sign, just so everyone gets the picture. So similar, if you haven't used Illustrator, we have videos on this. Sam's talked about it a lot. Uh, you can find that online. I'm going to quickly make an ellipse holding shift. So we actually are going to get a circle. Uh, and then I'm going to move that circle kind of somewhere in the middle. I'm then going to take that file I just downloaded. And I'm going to, well, I guess I'll just copy it. Select and copy, go over to here, and I'm going to paste. So now we have our fishing logo in here. So I can move that around. You'll notice now I have a couple different groups, the, the fish group and the circle. I just want to take the fish group and center it on the circle. So if I select both of these, I can then click center. I can align it to horizontally first, and then I can align it vertically second. And now I have this object centered there. Now I'm going to scale it up. So I'm just going to grab this and kind of drag it up. Oh, I need to deselect one first, actually. Just going to grab the, the fish now. I'm going to scale it up. What? Hold on just a second. Ah. Hmm. Okay, well, we can. Black mouse. This one. So. I can right click, sorry about that, transform. I'm just going to scale it here. There's plenty of ways to do everything in Illustrator, which is nice even when something doesn't work. So I'll go make that 200%. Uh, and then Command D actually does it the same action again. Now we have a fish, a lure, and a circle. I'll make the circle a little bit bigger, uh, as I think it will look better. Oh. OK, so. Now I'm just going to center it again. And I want to show you a quick little thing that's quite cool here. So Sam actually gave me this, and I think it's on the form right now. But you know, one of the things that's really cool about Origin is in the software, you can kind of predetermine all the types of cuts. When you get to Origin, you can also change that. But if you're importing it multiple times and you want to you uh, make sure you're not messing up and forgetting to set something to inside or outside cut, you can just select your object and then there's a little plugin for Illustrator that allows you to click uh, the type of, of cut you want. So black uh, is cut exterior, white is cut interior, pocket cut, online cut, and guide. So I just selected that circle. I'm going to do an outside cut, and then I select this group. And oh, I have to select each object separately. Let's see. Each object separately and click the white. Oh, because these are not. Hold on, let's see. This is where you know working with the software gets tricky when you're downloading stuff online sometimes because it's it's building it whatever way the artist built it. Uh, it may not work with everything. So uh, in this case, I would have to go back and do a little bit more work to get it to actually colorize, but that's easy enough. Ah, yes. So I can actually select. I can take this group and go to Pathfinder and Unite, and now that group becomes. A couple objects. Okay, so now I can select each object and hit the white. And now we have, uh, let's actually make it online cut because we're going to engrave this. So engravings will normally be an online cut. So I just highlight over here, it tells me online, and boom, now we have a small sign here. So there's a lot of stuff you can learn, but I just wanted to show you, you know, it's not that hard to create these little simple things. Using pre-made designs makes it quite a bit faster. And uh, it's, it's really something where I think that, you know, we have a lot of videos online. Feel free to go, you know, look up Affinity Designer and watch Sam use that or look up Illustrator. And whatever fits your price range and budget, I would just tend to learn one of them. There's so many to learn and they all work a little differently. And it can be quite confusing to try to learn all of them. So 
Okay, so next up, I think we're over to Jake. I know we're we're at 40 minutes now, so I talked for quite a while, but uh, uh, Jake's going to do some some cool demos, and we're we're going to keep going. So you know, if you have to drop off uh, or you're used to you know us ending at 40 minutes, like I said, as last week, we're gonna we're gonna get through the content. We're not gonna you know stop because we're running out of time. Uh, so Jake, why don't you take it on? Let's do it. Let's make some sawdust because we are back in the shop. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do two things here. Um, first one is going to be a really simple, on entirely on tool uh, sign, essentially, kind of like a checkout stand sign. It's just going to say card only. I'm going to use on tool text. I'm going to use basic shapes to actually cut out from my material exactly what I need. So I'm going to start with a scan. Doo -doo -doo. Nice scan. I got some ash down here on my workstation. Now I'm going to create a grid. There we go. All right. First things first, I have an engraving cutter in there, but I'm going to use the side of the engraving cutter to create that grid. So we know the shaft of the engraver is a quarter inch. I'm going to make a 0.25 inch grid, and I'm going to lower it down. Boom. Got our right, our left, and our side. Beautiful. Now we can start kind of making those components and placing them in piece by piece. First off, let's do the text. We're going to do two rows of text. Uh, first one's going to say, ew, card. I'm going to use that middle anchor and place it at, using my top, my readouts right here, 1.5 by 1.5. Let's do it a little further up. Ah, that's, okay. 1.5 by 1.5. Boom. Back into create text and do only same anchor just right below it again 1.5 by 0.75 trying to keep it centered at 1.5 all right so that's our text that's only going to be engraved i'm going to run through and do that real quick but first z touch remind the tool that i have an engraving bit Yes, I want a Z touch. Hands off the tool. Let it do its thing. You don't want to influence it in any way. And there we go. We're going to set our depth. Normally, an engra a normal engrave is 0.02. I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Just 0.04 to give it a little bit more pop. And these are online paths. So I have to start and stop at the end of my line. Set my spindle speed to around 3. And get going. So I'm using my auto feature, especially on text like this. So the best thing is my life so much easier, especially when you can use that formula. And you make sure that you make it fun. Yeah, yeah so, so I think, I think one, one thing, thing to, to you know think about here is you know this is this very simple small sign you can create it directly on tool you don't need to mess with a computer uh, you know there's always always a, a reason to come up for a simple sign like this you know uh, card only may be a first door that has stopped right now and using Frankie signs out quickly so I think the you know one of the key for me is this is a this is a software that came out about um, Two softwares ago, we released uh, this extension, and it's been really, really well used. I think it's one of the super cool things you can do on Tool is quickly get text, you type it, you press enter, and then you can cut it out. Um, for people who haven't had a chance to check it out, definitely try to get some time um, 
text basic it is quite fun and um, you know there's a lot of things that aren't in there multi-line etc but you can do all that you can make a grid place things uh, above and below them uh, it's, it's a really cool one beautiful like that came out really nice i like that depth all right back onto our design tab we're going to create kind of a cross cut because we're working with this piece of Maybe. mesh and i'm actually just going to cut straight through it and with that i'm going to create a rectangle so the height doesn't really matter but i'll do around you know, more than our piece so i'll do like three and a half on our height Pieces two and a half inches wide, so um, our width is uh, 0.5. Again, we're just using it, using it as a cutting tool essentially. And place that at 3.25 and 1.25. So that's going to be my cut line. And then I want this piece over here, I want this to actually sit into a nice little rabbit that we've created in our, in our other piece. So, but I'm going to design the rabbit first. Our material is 0.715 inches, just a little under 3 quarter of an inch. So we create a rectangle. We're going to set that height to our thickness of the material. So that is... 0.715 and our width again doesn't really matter we're just kind of trying to get it centered so we'll do three and a half again what does matter is we want to place that in the center of our board like that so we're going to do this as a little pocket we're going to cut this one all the way through i'm going to swap my cutter out since we're cutting wood to my quarter inch upcut bit. Throw that cutter in there. And back in. As always, we've taken the spindle out, so we're going to remind the tool of its bit size, which is now a quarter of an inch. And it conveniently reminds me that I need to Z-touch. Z-touch. Hands off where you can see them. Boom. All right, I'm going to do this in a couple of depth passes. But basically, my first, my first maneuver is to cut through this piece right here. I will remove this area so that I can use it to test fit. Then I'm going to cut this uh, rabbit. And give myself a little bit of an offset. All right. Yeah, so one of the things, you know, Jake's going to show in a minute is, you know, so we're going to remove that left side of this sign. Uh, you know, we could have taken over the miter saw, chopped it in half very quickly. Uh, but, you know, we're going to have to change to a quarter inch bit anyway, so we'll just show it this way. A um, couple passes, lowering the depth as we're doing it. Uh, gets you through pretty quickly and cleanly. And then once we cut this out, we're going to use the width of that piece to cut a dado down the middle of the other side so that the sign will fit with just friction fit um, right into it and kind of sit up straight. Okay, so there's final pass. We're all the way through. Okay, and then we'll switch over to this camera. So we can show you what's going on. So yeah, we just cut that middle part there. 
you know, one of the kind of key, I love this little like uh, paint scraper is super awesome for getting stuff off the double sided tape or whatever. Have. Yeah, you got to have one of these guys. So now I'm going to use this. The idea here is we're going to set that up in a little rabbit. Again, just a uh, countertop sign, something quick and easy. It's all dictated by the length of your material, but I wanted to intentionally just use Origin for this if I had a piece of scrap wood laying around. I could get creative with it. Let's cut that. We're not going to go too deep on the pocket. We'll do about an eighth of an inch. Uh, and back to my origin screen. I'm going to switch that to pocket. Change that to eighth. And take a little bit of material away. And so we'll start with the pocket, and then you'll notice right here he's changing to an inside cut. That uses the same shape we already had, but just switches the cut profiles right on the fly. Uh, it's super fun to be able to quickly change something. You know, if you're, there's times where you're cutting, you know, a swizzle and you want to do an offset. Maybe you cut the outside first, you can change it to an inside cut, do an offset, and now you kind of have this matching profile at different depths. So... Here we go. We're going to try that test fit on this other camera. Oh, that's perfect. I'm not even going to take any more off. It's this good, huh? It's such a light pass. Look at that. It's just that nice friction fit. Oh, yeah. Fitting together tightly. And we'll pop that off. This double sided tape is quite good. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yes, I absolutely love this double sided tape. It uh Okay. It's been a lot of time finding the one that we liked. So Jake, why don't you show that final image in the camera real quick? Bada bing, bada boom. Quick quick sign. Uh I would suggest the quick paint and sand method for this one. Uh it works really well for simple signs like this. Okay. So that is the first little demo we did. Yeah. Pretty nice, pretty nice. You think we have time for the second one? Oh, uh, I think I think we got a, All right. a quick time. We're going to go for it. I think it's a quick, uh, this is kind of like we're getting a little bit, uh, we're going to put kind of a quick little spin on this next one that maybe you guys haven't seen before. So I'm hoping this one's like hot tips, okay? Yeah, this one was nice and simple and easy. I just wanted to put it out there. So you, like I said, scrap piece of wood laying around grab it, make it into something interesting, have it say whatever you want it to say. Uh, let's move over to some dye bond. Like we said earlier, dye bond is that composite material, layer of aluminum, layer of plastic, layer of aluminum, great indoor outdoor sign material. Uh, the, thicker it, the, the thicker it is, the more robust it is, but when it's thin, it's actually pretty uh, bendable and dentable, but that actually may work in your favor if you're making more of a three-dimensional sign. We're going to take the numbers that are already on Shaper Hub, uh, for kind of out, outside of the house numbers. And then, oh, I'll put this over here with you. And that was created by one of our designers years ago. But let's take that back out of the vault. Let's put it onto some dye bond. And then we're going to do an alignment trick for when we actually are applying it to the outside of our house. So first off, I'm going to change my cutter. I'm going to move this around too real quick. Thank you. So I'm going to put, because we're cutting not only aluminum, we're cutting plastic as well, I'm going to be using an O-flute as a single spiraling flute. And I'm also going to be turning my spindle speed down. I'm going to turn my plunge speed down and my auto speed down. That, the reason for that being is we're plunging into aluminum. So we don't want to kind of surprise ourselves or the tool, really, with the, how hard the aluminum is. So if we slow that plunge speed down, it's going to give us a cleaner, cleaner entry into the material. Eighth inch O flute in. Back on the tool. And 
And actually, maybe while he's doing that, uh, Noah, if you can come over to my screen, I'll show people real quick where they can get these files from. So if you go to ShaperHub, uh, the Explore page, these files are available. We designed them oh man, a long time ago, two or three years ago. Uh, if you sort by Shaper Design, you'll see these house numbers here. Uh, and if you click on those, it includes uh, numbers 0 through 9. Uh, they're really cool uh, numbers. They have a really nice style to them. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is the registration marks are not totally per uh, parallel and straight up and down on these. Uh, for instance, all the letters have a slight twist. So cutting these letters out is easy, but when you go to align them on a, on a, a fence or on a, on a building, they end up you know, not being that straight. Uh, so we're going to show a little tip after this how to make these straight, uh, and we'll show you some quick tips about cutting dive on. All right, I'm creating a quick grid on my material using my eighth inch bit. Doesn't really matter the size of the grid right now. So I'm just going to align to the same cross line. So I'm going to go into my import. I've got my house numbers open. I'm going to do a nine using that bottom anchor, bottom middle in this case. I'm just going to cheat it over here a little bit. I'm cutting the outside of this out, so I just want—I don't want to waste a ton of material. Pop that down. Back into import, and I'm going to grab a three. Oh, and I should mention real quick, Jake, the uh, this double-sided tape, while he's setting that up, uh, this double-sided tape is now available on the Shaper store. Uh, it's the stuff that we love. Uh, we've been using it for years. Uh, it's finally available on Shaper Tool store. You can get it there. Uh, it's $24. Uh, it's, it's the best stuff you can find. It doesn't leave a whole lot of residue. It sticks really well. Uh, this is a must-have with Origin. So go check out the store, uh, and we'll maybe have some giveaways later. Oh, I love, it. love it. All right, so I'm deciding really my spacing right now. I gotta have it nice and tight, depending on where it, where it's going. But I like about an inch between the two posts. Notice how I have my mounting holes all in line because of that grid. I'll place that and get to cutting. Uh, I'm going to tell my tool, eighth of an inch, Z-touch, let it do its thing. Now the die bond's only eighth of an inch thick too, so I'm pretty confident that I can do that as long as I turn my plunge speed down and spindle speed And maybe down. explain real quick the plunge speed down while yeah, you're so doing that. Yeah, so the plunge speed, so as you see here, the normal, your default plunge speed is 15 inches per minute. That is the speed at which the spindle dives into the material. So by pulling that back, we kind of ease ourselves into the aluminum and the, the die bond instead of kind of coming down at it at the default 15 inches per minute. So I'm going to do five. And as always, we do our offset. And let's get cruising. Okay, so that's nothing new here, just cutting like you normally do. You know, one of the things when you're working in these other materials that aren't wood, really especially if you haven't worked with them before, um, is really just thinking about doing some quick cuts. Maybe you do it in a scrap piece, maybe you do it in you know, an area of the letter with a big offset, so later you can remove that and, and you have a waste of anything. Um, and thus, we use these materials quite a bit for different things, and so we kind of know the speed, but you'll see, you know, you're moving it a little, about the same speed as you normally would with wood, um, but what you'll notice if the spindle speed is too high, you're actually going to get a lot of melting uh, with the with the plastic part of that, so it's just something to be aware of, you know, all these materials like we talked about in last week's sessions, it'll actually, uh, you need to check it. Yeah.
Okay, so now we're doing the second. Uh, so now we just need to do a couple holes for the top. Uh, so I'm going to go a little deeper on that next one. Okay. That's one of the beautiful things. You can always go deeper with Origin. You just I mean. got to make sure you don't go too deep in the first place. All right, so I'm going to cut out my nine now. Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, after, you know, one of the things I would suggest for next time, probably normally we cut the, cut the holes first, but you know, as long as it doesn't come loose, you're, you're okay. But after he finishes final cuts, we'll go back and drill the holes where you would screw in the numbers to the, to the wall. So we'll go ahead and do that quickly. And those are really just little plunges. Uh, if you haven't used the Helix software, that'll actually basically auto cut to whatever depth you want. So you don't have to plunge cut over and over. If you want to cut a single hole uh, all the way to an inch, you can just put one inch in. If the Helix button shows up in the bottom right there uh, and it's blue, that means it's going to automatically, you'll see that lots of spindle now. It'll actually do kind of a little moving around and it go all the way to the depth. So he's going to go plunge cut all those tiny circles. And then we'll go back and we'll cut all the other ones maybe to half depth so the screw head can get sunk in there. If we really wanted to make it nice, we could go back and cut some plugs out of dive bond and stick that over the top so you have a flush top surface. So Helix is really awesome. It came out in the software maybe a year or so ago. Maybe actually two years now, I guess. Um, so, you know, keep that origin connected to Wi-Fi and update. Uh, so now, you saw that. He just divided the depth by half and now you see how the spindle is actually moving quite a bit more now so he's not moving origin the spindle is doing all the work uh and the speeds and feeds in the speed setting actually affect the auto in a big way so if you want it to go faster in circles you can change the auto speed if you want it to go faster up and down you can change the plunge speed Last couple of cuts. And you can see he turns off auto's auto for Helix. I'm guessing because it looked a little slow and just cutting him in one pass. Yeah, maybe maybe while we're there, can we show uh, the select method real quick? How like you can use the select button to oh, absolutely. when those two shapes are really close to each other. Especially in a situation like this, where if there was much more much more else going on here, it get really confusing. As soon as I hover over an area like this, this button up down here pops up. It says select, and it actually tells me how many different things I can select. When I tap that, I hop back and forth between the center of that circle and the collar, which I which I just cut. And it also is nice because if I'm moving around, if I've already selected that, it wants to snap there first. Same thing with this. If I come over here, I come back over here. So it makes it easy. You right. notice I turned Helix off at a certain point because I'm only going yeah, I saw that. half of an eighth of an inch. So I don't necessarily need the Helix down for something like that. All right. Now for the more interesting part. Well, not necessarily the more interesting, but I want to use an alignment trick that I learned from Sean. I'm going to keep everything where it is. I'm going to put my engraving bit in there. This is especially helpful if I'm doing something large. I have a lot of mounting holes and I need to transfer those mounting holes over 
onto something else, like a wall, and I'm trying to get it nice and level and everything like that. So I put my engraving bit in, because I'm going to use that like a stylus, a sharp point stylus. Grab a piece of paper with some blue tape on it, thus creating my, my wall template. Just want to make sure that I'm not covering my shaper tape and then gently bring origin down on top of that. Actually, before I start that, I'm going to Z-touch. Touch off on my material. And come back over the holes. Going for that center. And I'm just going to plunge just a hair. And I don't, I don't need to turn on the spindle because I'm just using the engraving bit as kind of a, a knife. Again, really important that you start high and drag down onto your material, onto your paper. And so, yeah, if you're if the spindle's not on, it'll it'll yeah, warn you, hey, the spindle's not on. Don't forget to turn the spindle on before you cut. But if you click the green button, it'll automatically advance. If you're doing something like this, using a pin, using a drag knife, something that actually isn't powered by the spindle, um, and then then now we can take those those little points and kind of put a little tiny circle around them so we can see them later. And this is kind of a this was a trick I learned maybe a year ago when I had to put these signs on my house, uh, and I was trying to get them straight afterwards. So so now we have tape on it, and now we can take a level with those two lower dots, line them up so that it's level, tape it on there, and now when we take the letters out, you can actually drill your pilot holes through those circles, and they are going to be perfectly aligned because we used a grid to set those shapes up. So this is a super nice way to get alignment features. You know, there's a lot of stuff with signs where when you're cutting multiple pieces, numbers, letters, little objects, and you really want to figure out how to align those perfectly, a lot of times you end up doing something like this or even just cutting out like another piece uh, where, you know, those, that piece is going to be throwaway, but it just shows you the, uh, it just shows you exactly how it's going to fit there. So you're using it to place, you know, a letter on something and then you remove it and then you're done. Uh, so it's super nice and gets you a really nice uh, finish on that. So. That's a quick little kind of tip I've developed over the last maybe year working on it. And uh, you know, maybe we can quickly show you the final yeah. cut. Here we go. A little bit of fuzz knockoff. And it's got that protective layer on it that we could just peel back. Yeah, and so that, that's one of the really nice things about Dibon, and you'll notice a lot of the materials like Dibon, acrylic, they actually come with like cover sheets on the top, yep. uh, which is super great for Origin, because while you're cutting, Origin's riding on the base of that surface. Uh, and, you know, I normally clean the bottom off with kind of a, a towel that's like a microfiber before I'm cutting something that's riding on it. That way it gets uh, really nice, uh, get all the, you know, wood shavings out of it so that when I'm running over, I'm not marring it up as I go. So... That's a simple little tip. I think it's a pretty cool one. Hopefully it helps you as you're going. We'll see you next week.